Today I'm going to be performing a posterior, anterior, and inferior glenohumeral glides on my patient. I'm doing this to assess joint mobility, if there's any hypermobility or hypomobility, just meaning any um, stiffness or laxity in the joint there. So I have my patient supine and I'm going to have them go into this 90 degree motion here and then go ahead and just rest my your hand on my hand. And then my hand's gonna be on the glenohumeral head, and this is gonna be my posterior glide. So um, I'm gonna apply just an anterior, um, posterior force here at the glenohumeral head. And I'm just assessing how that joint is moving and um, also watching my patient's face for any wincing to see if there's any pain. And I would assess if it's hyper or hypomobile. And then to do an inferior glide, I'm gonna come on this side and stabilize the arm here and then place my other hand on top here and I'm gonna apply a lateral and inferior um, scooping motion like so to see how that joint moves and if there's any hyper or hypomobility and how my patient responds. So now I'm gonna do the anterior glide. My patient is now in prone and I'm gonna support my patient's um, arm on my leg and then I'm going to, with my other hand, I'm gonna um, go on the back of the humerus at the glenohumeral joint and I'm gonna apply a posterior to anterior force now. And same thing, I'm just assessing how that joint moves and if there's any stiffness or laxity. These glides are important to do in my patient examination to see how the glenohumeral joint is moving and to also give me more information about if it's hypermobile or hypomobile and to be aware of that when prescribing interventions for my patient. If I noticed a hypomobile joint, I might use these um, glides as a form of intervention just to get more movement or help with pain management with my patient, and if it was hypermobile, I might want to avoid um, doing any interventions that are going to put this joint in a position of instability.